Hello everyone and welcome to High Availability in OpenStack with Platform 9. My name is Jeremy Brooks, a systems engineer, along with my colleague Cody Hill. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Before we dive in a little deeper, let's give a little bit of background about Platform 9. As a company, we were founded in 2013 by a number of ex-VMware engineers, and we really started gaining global traction on our platform around 2015. We've been over the past couple of years, we've been recognized a number of times by various outlets for making private clouds easy. A little bit of background about Platform 9's OpenStack architecture. We provide OpenStack as a managed service, uh, supporting a number of the OpenStack core projects. Everything from Keystone for Identity to Nova for Compute, Glance for Image Storage, Neutron with, for Advanced Networking, and Cinder for block storage. We operate this on top of VMware, KVM, and also Docker with our managed Kubernetes solution. So Platform 9 is managed OpenStack and it's enterprise grade OpenStack as a service. The core underlying infrastructure is powered by your servers inside your four walls of your data center. And we essentially provide OpenStack with a guaranteed SLA. We will install, monitor, troubleshoot, and upgrade your OpenStack environment. Uh, and again, operate on everything from KVM, VMware, and Docker. So today we're here to talk about high availability. And what exactly is high availability? High availability is something that we commonly hear referred to when people are talking about their critical systems, something that needs to run with five nines type of availability. But how do you actually achieve that? A redundant stack is not sufficient enough for high availability. You can't just have multiple uh, services and call your system highly available. You may still lose pieces of that application. Uh, for true high availability, you need some form of automated remediation and detection, the ability to automatically detect uh, liveness as a state, and then to self-heal that application or server uh, when that liveness is found to be down. And again, this is something that hasn't been commonly available with OpenStack in the past, and today we're here to talk about how Platform 9 is looking to change that. So how does Platform 9 go about solving the high availability issue? Uh, Platform 9 allows administrators to designate failure domains through the OpenStack concept of availability zones. This allows a administrator to choose which backend compute servers are in an availability zone. And once those are added to the availability zone, Platform 9's high availability construct will auto-configure those groups of servers to form a high availability cluster. This gives visibility out to your end users without actually displaying the back-end logistics of host aggregate visibility and, and how you're actually grouping these pieces of compute power. So how does Platform 9 HA work for OpenStack workloads? Uh, you configure your compute resources into availability zones, and once high availability has been enabled for those availability zones, Platform 9 is going to do the work in the back end to make that into a highly available cluster for you. What this means is that when any hypervisor in this zone goes down, your virtual machines or cloud-native applications will be migrated and brought up on other hypervisors. So as I stated, this concept works not only with standard monolithic mode one virtual machines, but also with cloud native applications. For cloud native applications, we leverage heat auto scaling groups across availability zones to give the application the ability to fail over if you do lose uh, a host, a blade chassis, or worst case, an entire rack or data center in your OpenStack implementation. With that in mind, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Cody Hill to do a live demo of the Platform 9 high availability capabilities. Hi, welcome to Platform 9. My name is Cody Hill and I'll be showing you a demo for our VMHA functionality. Um, we have uh, VMHA functionality for cloud native applications as well as legacy applications. Um, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and log into our Platform 9 UI. 
um, we're going to go over to the infrastructure tab here and you'll notice that we have um, eight hypervisors here that are um, authorized and we have two availability zones so we have these split between um, availability zones one and availability zones two now these uh, the availability zones can simulate um, failure domains inside your data center. Maybe these are separated by physical racks. Maybe they're separated by physical data centers. So that's your choice. Um, and to configure these, we'll go to the host aggregates tab and the availability zones here. Um, so right now, uh, we can create new availability zones and add hosts to them. And um, we need to enable high availability. So on availability zone one, we'll come in here and enable the high availability here. So we'll check that box to enable that. Great, you get the nice green badge here saying that it's enabled. And we'll do that on availability zone two as well. Great, so now we have um, high availability enabled in these zones. So they will be um, you know, able to not only uh, keep the cloud native apps highly available, but legacy apps as well. So the first, um, you know, demo that we're going to be showing you is to spin up a cloud native application. So we'll come here to orchestration and we're going to be spinning up a heat orchestration stack and um, we need to choose our orchestration template. So I'll choose it from file here. We have our cloud app and then it has a dependency template that has all of our cloud config information. So we'll go ahead and choose that as well. Um, and now we have some parameters here that we need to populate. Um, and that is to specify what availability zones we want this application to be scaled across, right? So um, we're specifying availability zones as AZ1 and AZ2. Now we need to give this a name. So we're going to call this cloud app stack. And we're going to go ahead and launch this stack. So again, you get a nice green badge here when uh, the stack is being created. And the creation is in progress here. So let's go ahead and jump into the stack and look at it. Um, and these are all the parameters that the stack is using, including that one that we passed in, that AZ1 um, availability zone AZ1 and AZ2. And the resources um, that this is, is doing um, creating right now. So right now, this is... Um, creating an auto-scaling group um, that is dependent on um, the scaling policy. So we have a scaling policy here that's dependent on an alarm. So it'll know if a host or a virtual machine is down. Um, and then uh, we'll be it has created these two servers out of this auto-scaling policy, right? Um, so we can go over to the Instances tab and look at those servers. So one of them's online. Um, it's on Hypervisor 08. And um, the second one will be coming online in just a minute, but it's going to be in Hypervisor 02. Um, so you can see here on the Infrastructure tab that on Hypervisor 02, we have, um, that is in Availability Zone 1, and Hypervisor 08 is in Availability Zone 2. Great. Um, so we'll come over here to uh, the Instances tab. And uh, we're going to wait for these to fully boot up, and then uh, we will discover the IP addresses for this instance. All right, and we're back. Those IP addresses have been discovered. Um, so you can see they're on a 10.4 um, network here. And we actually have a load balancer behind the scenes that's um, looking for this cloud app stack to be created. And we'll automatically start load balancing these IP addresses. Um, so you can see on the um, orchestration tab here, um, that th those IP addresses are being reported back through heat. Um, and so we have something monitoring this and pulling those IP addresses to load balance that. Um, so we're going to connect to that load balancer and um, connect to that demo.html. And this brings us to our demo application. So um, our demo application is uh, a um, three-tiered application. There's a web server, an app server, and a database server. Um, so we're hitting the web server right now and we're connecting to a um, back-end application server. Um, and that application server happens to be hosted on, um, be, be load balanced by the same load balancer um, and is actually on those same VMs. It's also elastically scaling. So we're going to go ahead and connect to this 
And when we connect to this, you'll see that we have a list of all of the NFL quarterbacks and, uh, and their ranking last year, as well as the teams that they're on. Um, so you can see that um, automatically, every five seconds here, this last updated is being updated. So we're pulling this um, as an updated um, deal here. And so we're actually going to simulate a failure of one of the compute nodes as we speak. One of the compute nodes are uh, the plugs being ripped out of them. All right, so we just simulated a host failure um, on the back end. So we're going to go ahead and um, start pinging those hosts. And uh, so we'll come in here and we will start pinging the um, first host as well as the second host here. And you can see that the host on the left is completely down uh, and the host on the right is up. But um, this, this application is still updating and is, uh, is still showing these NFL players and their ranks, right? So there's no issues here. And, uh, and we're in good shape. So that cloud native app actually stayed online. Um, we had virtually no downtime. Any user that had a active session with the one uh, web server would have been failed over to the second. Um, so that's great. And, and that's showing our um, cloud native application use case. So now what we're going to do is we are going to simulate a um, a legacy application and what um, and this isn't done right so this just, just takes a little bit of time um, so in the in the interim we'll be simulating our legacy application but the cloud native application is actually going to spawn a new virtual machine to take its place um, to ensure that it's highly available and online so that takes about five to six minutes so we'll be spinning up the legacy application and testing that as well um, and while this thing is spinning up. But just notice that this OpenStack ID um, ends in 6DB0 for um, this instance. And, and that will be uh, reprovisioned and replaced on that availability zone on one of the hosts, one through four, um, to make sure that's highly available. So let's spin up our legacy application. So we'll go ahead and create that legacy app. Um, and uh, we're going to put that in Availability Zone 2. That's where we want this to live. Um, it'll be a small application, and um, we're going to put it on our lab network. And I'll call this the uh, Legacy App 01. That's what I'll give this, uh, name this. And we'll customize this system a bit. Um, so I have a, a guest customization script, just like the last one had a cloud config script. Um, that we're setting the password and doing a couple things here. And let's go ahead and create that instance. And again, nice green badge here, instance is being created. And uh, you can see here that the instance is building. And not only that, you can see that we also, at this point, have an error state VM. Our cloud app stack is gone. And it has spun up a new instance ID on Hypervisor 03. Um, so it's the exact same um, functionality that we're looking for and uh, the discovery will also take place and we will discover this IP address here and um, this uh, this host will be removed from the stack um, as well as the legacy app is being created right now and we'll also be discovering that IP address. The IP, dis IP discovery has taken place. We now know the IP address of our new um, legacy application as well as the cleanup operation has taken place on the cloud app. So the cloud app, um, the old machine is down and we're back in a healthy state there. Um, so let's go ahead and connect to this legacy app and we will watch, um, we'll also simulate a failure there. Um, so we can connect to that um, slash demo.html and again it's the same application um, yet this one's built on a single application and not an auto scaling group. Um, so we can come here and you can see that we have all of the NFL um, players that are here um, based on rank. And now we're going to simulate a uh, application failure. And notice this is updating every five um, seconds here. And when this failure happens, um, you know, this is going to completely go down. Um, so, and, and this will take a little bit of time to resume. So uh, let's go ahead and also do a ping operation here to that host. And you can see that it's down. And um, 
you know, when we cl click the refresh here, you can see it stopped refreshing. Um, it, this thing is uh, dead in the water. Now, um, you know, just kind of note the time here um, on my console that um, this system has gone down and uh, at this time, basically, and it'll take a little bit to bring it back online. Um, we can see that um, we are now respawning this instance um, on another host. You can see it's on Hypervisor 06. Um, it's now been respawned, it's active, um, and it's coming online, and there they are. Um, so there we go. We're now able to, uh, you know, see this thing. It's back online. And let's check out that application. Let's see how it's doing. Hey, the application's back online. Um, let's go ahead and connect to it. And here we go. We're connected. We're in good shape. And uh, again, this will start um, refreshing every five seconds here, and, and we're back in, in good standing. So what, what we've shown here is two different applications. Um, actually, it's the same application modeled in two different ways. One's cloud native, that's behind a load balancer that can auto scale. And another is your legacy uh, monolithic application. And we have HA protection natively in OpenStack using a KVM hypervisor. And all of this is built into the product. Um, and if you'd like to learn more, you can uh, give us a call over at Platform 9. and We'd be happy to do this live for you. So thank you very much, and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks, Cody. Now to summarize Platform 9's HA capabilities, Platform 9 auto configures liveness detection across your availability zone. and gives you the capability to have your distributed clusters managed automatically, along with giving you the capability to have at least one app instance, ensure one app instance is deployed per specified availability zone. Before we take any questions, we want to leave you with a, a quote from one of our customers uh, stating that they now feel comfortable enough with the high availability, availability solutions provided by Platform 9 to leverage KVM and OpenStack for all production workloads as well. With that, are there any questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. And just a reminder, as a next step, why don't you go ahead and try it yourself? Experience how easy private clouds can be at www.platform9.com uh, and sign up for our Platform 9 Sandbox.